Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. Today, Ed, we're going to look at Grant Morrison's Animal Man number five. Memorable issue. I love this issue. But before we dive in, uh, what's new? Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor, serializing Red Room comic strips up there, man. I just finished uh, the fourth issue this past week, including a Jolly Rancher retching out an old deformed lady's eyeball. But don't worry, she'll get her comeuppance, man, with that... <laughs> great amount of exit manga kind of exit wounds three bucks get you the archives tuesday is the day that new strips come up uh every week and they're at a high enough resolution that people have been printing out and sending me their own bootleg versions because they don't feel like reading it on the screen prototyping yes <laughs> <laughs> what you got jimmy Octobriana 1976, world's first blacklight comic, is in stores everywhere right now. We just filled a giant order for uh, the direct market, so you should be able to find these in any good comic shop while supplies last. We are almost out of the print run. It has sold well. Thank you, everybody that has supported this book. But if you want a unique comic like this in your collection, get it whenever you see it, because uh, I don't know if we're reprinting this. It's not gonna, the easiest thing to make. It's going to cost you 50 bucks on eBay in a couple of months. You heard <laughs> Pretty it here <soon>. first. <laughs> Animal Man. Grant Morrison, obviously a very popular writer, a very uh, stylistic writer, and Animal Man, one of his early breakthrough hits. This is from 1988, so pretty early in that run, and uh, one of the titles that really put him on the map, I think, in a lot of ways. Yeah, for sure. Uh, obviously, for a K Faber like myself, what put him on the map were those like uh, teen issues of um, Spawn, 18, 19, 17, 18, gotcha. something like that. That's how, that's how I <laughs> discovered him. We should uh, dig into those sometime. Oh, we will. <laughs> we definitely will. Um, but I read this run one time. Uh, you and I were already friends. Never really fucked with Morrison, you know, for whatever reason. I just, you know, more gaming. Yeah, I'm down. Like, this guy never really read much Morrison stuff that connected with me in any deep way. But Animal Man is probably you know, my favorite, I guess. Let's start with the cover. Brian cover. Boland, killer cover artist, man. He, in a lot of ways, I, I feel like Sienkiewicz was the guy that drew every single cover in the 80s. Boland kind of takes over that uh, cover artist role as being a guy who, I'm so impressed with his covers. Absolutely. Like, just just a, the, the, just a sheer level of drawing ability is amazing. And, you know, he would have done, you know, Animal Man, Wonder Woman covers, Flash at the time. He did some Tank Girl covers, did yeah. a lot of Vertigo cover work. And one thing that impresses me with him, it's it's very, very tight, his his drawing. Yeah, insanely. Which usually means erasing the life from the drawing. Uh, usually that, that results in stiffness and just, it doesn't usually work. He is great with figures. He does this very tight, very clean style, and yet the figures have a real vibrancy to them. Um, it's amazing. Yeah, he co he colors his covers for the most part. I, I would bet he colors these as well. Um, this this is the kind of cover that I think requires a uh, you know the artist's touch. You know, he clearly has a specific vision and idea of what this needs to look like. This is a very iconic cover too. I mean, obviously you have your Christian pose of Animal Man uh, on the ground, but also the black and white and going into the cover, the meta element of the artist hand, you know, rendering this thing. Yeah. Pretty cool, man. If, if I remember, this is like the first issue where fourth wall stuff is really starting to happen. Like you got, you got the first couple where you're setting up like this new world, you know, this new character, animal man. Hey man, Neil Gaiman re revamped Sandman. Let's, let's give this animal man character a shot. Uh, this is the one where you, you start to feel like there's, there's, there's something, something more at play here. Yeah. I have a note of that. There are, I think four examples of the artist that we'll see the artist hand, uh, you know, starting with the cover right here, but uh, let's, let's dive in and, yeah. and see what's inside of this. Um, one quick note before we get into the story, in this like editorial promotional piece, they talk about him taking over Doom Patrol, Grant Morrison. And uh, you know, you mentioned this this being like an early piece. Doom Patrol is what I always think of with uh Grant Morrison, you know, really kind of flexing and, and establishing himself in a lot of ways and doing really cool superheroes. I, you know, I got a hold of the run and I'm go I'm gonna give it a read. For the first time. I never read one uh Doom Patrol comic, so I'm gonna give it a give it a pass and, and see see what i think so start out very basic here easy to read easy to follow nine panel grid good centerpiece and uh the story here is 
This character is hitchhiking her way across the country to L.A. with aspirations of being an actress in Hollywood. The truck driver is sort of a born-again uh, Christian who struggled himself for a couple years on the streets of, of L.A. and uh, found with his partner, kind of found his way out of there and has this silver cross around his neck and the, the uh, photograph of he and his partner here plugged up on his truck visor. There are going to be some some weird bits to this story, mm -hmm. uh, pieces that I'm not sure are in the issue. So, right. you know, like these are kind of clues as to what's going on and, and gives us an idea of who, who these characters are briefly as they're driving across the desert. And uh, I love this coloring. You know, it, I don't know if it captures the heat exactly, but it gives me a sense of this surreal, it's almost crazy cat-esque, some of these background details of the desert. But I love that sun, that red sun. And coloring by uh, Ta Tatiana Wood. I uh, guess yes, um, classic. colored a lot of the Alan Moore, Steve Bissett, Swamp Thing issues. Yeah, but she's flexing on Baxter paper. Looks good, man. So they're driving down the highway, having this conversation whenever they spot something in the road, a silhouette of something. You're driving a tractor trailer truck. You're not stopping. They drive over this thing and they just keep on going. And probably one of my first questions well, – well, we'll come back to it. Okay. But driving down the road, they hit this thing and it's some roadkill. And we see the caption of pain. And that caption is the voice of this character that's been run over. And name of the story, Coyote Gospel. This is Wiley Coyote. Yes. In, in, in the real world, right? And in, in, in those captions, Morrison is in, in, in gory detail telling you about all the... About how this character is stitching himself back together. You know, my lung reinflates. Uh, you know, the, the raw nerves are... You know, pins and needles, blah, blah, blah. The, the pelvic girdle fuses along hairline sutures. Yeah. This, uh, it reminds me of Wolverine. Every now and then you'll get a Wolverine bit where he's uh, he's hurt and the healing factor's working overtime. Um, there's a few of these kind of things that the coyote suffers, and then we get to hear graphic detail of, of the pain or, or the effects of being stitched back together. It really works. It does work. Yeah, it does. Um, creative team here, Grant Morrison, writer, obviously, Chaz Trug and Doug Hazelwood are the artists. John Costanza lettering, Katiana Wood coloring, and another really great example of her coloring here, Karen Berger, editor, who would go on to do Vertigo, Animal Man, and Grant Morrison, both kind of become a big part of Vertigo as that, uh, as that imprint forms over the next couple of years. But love the coloring. Yeah. So we cut to a little bit of uh, Animal Animal Man, who is not featured very heavily in this issue. I I love that, that Chaz... Chad Churog uh, did Badger as well. And that just looks like Badger. That's what I thought too. <laughs> <laughs> it looks exactly like Badger. Is that um, a Badger shirt? Yeah, man. It, it, it has to be, right? I think so. It's funny they get away with it. Animal Man's cleaning out all the meat products uh, from, from the kitchen and his family is not on board with this. Yeah, but it's just a redheaded stepchild, so he doesn't matter that much <laughs> <laughs> with a mullet. And now we're out flying around and... Uh, I don't know. Just looking around, I guess. Yeah. Not, not, not much going on in that page. Got to survey the scene. But here's where we return to the truck driver now. And this is a year has passed since that opening scene. And the truck driver, you can see he's gone bald. He's lost his job. He talks about his mother dying, uh, cancer that took his mother's life. His partner died. And we see a newspaper, the girl that he was transporting to, uh, to L.A. or given a ride to L.A., died as a prostitute Sl in, in slain a drug in a raid. drug raid right so their lives have gone off the rails in the in the year that passed from the beginning of this story and he blames this devil character and this is one of the the plot holes that i was alluding to we never really i never understand what that means you know they hit this this creature who he is now hunting they hit this creature with the truck, barely see the creature, don't stop and acknowledge like what it is that they hit. I don't really know that connection to the devil. I guess bad luck just befell them after that. Right. And he somehow reverse engineered that it's based on a roadkill. As a trucker, he must have killed a hundred things on the road. <laughs> yeah, everything was was peaches and cream until that day in the desert when he ran over a beaver. Yeah, very very like I said, it's, it's kind of a gap. But nevertheless, he's hunting down this coyote character who would be strange if you came across this thing. If you ever saw this in the wild, half cartoon, half man, half Shit animal. fucking pants. And, <laughs> yeah. and actually go far away. Like, like don't, don't pounce that thing. Leave. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty bizarre. But we don't get into that part. But, but he does shoot the, the coyote that he's been stalking. 
who falls off a cliff. And again, the references to Wiley e. Coyote, like at this point, briefly, its feet pedal empty air. Exactly Wiley e. Coyote. Uh, and then a little puff of smoke. Yes. So pretty fun, uh, you know, pretty strange story elements, but entertaining and, and certainly held my interest. Um, not the first time I've read this. So, you know, we're coming back around because I think it's interesting enough to look at here. But the coyote he knows is still alive, as the uh, captions inform us, pushes a rock on top of him. Again, another uh, reference, I think, to the Warner Brothers kind of shenanigans that you could expect in, in old Wiley e. Coyote comics. And his goal is to get down there and put this magic bullet their words, Grant Morrison's words, shoot him with this magic bullet to put an end to this character. And that's whenever Animal Man kind of uh, sees what's going on and is just flying around. I guess if you could fly, this is what I'd be doing with it too. I wouldn't be <laughs> fighting crime. I'd be out soaring with the eagles. Just surveying the land, being a, being a vegetarian. Yes. Yeah, why not? So uh, there's also a bomb that goes off. You know, this guy, right out of the cartoon, right? All these props. The guy had apparently forgotten the bomb setup, so he gets caught a little bit in it. I like this stuff of like the falling debris. I thought it was a really effective, uh, you know, like the post bomb aftermath kind of stuff I thought looks really good. And then we see the coyote st stringing itself back to life, missing a limb, you know, and, and he talks about watching it grow a foot as, it, as it's like dragging along. Very graphic. I like all that stuff. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think it is weirdly more effective than the uh the usual wolverine stuff there's even a piece of um talking about his retina being detached oh yeah and then when it reconnects like the the gray shapes starting to emerge pretty good language um so he lands animal man lands and uh at this point all that's left is uh the coyotes kind of back to life hands animal man the uh coyote gospels the name of this story that he had been carrying around his neck and at this point, we go into the Coyote's kind of uh, history and how he gets to this point, this reality, if you will. You know, he starts out in this cartoon land. P.S. Black Orchid uh, ad here, Neil Gaiman, Dave McKean. Oh, sure. I so, love so, so all that, these ads. So that's before uh, Sandman then. This is before Sandman. I didn't realize. Oh, it must have been, must have been right before Sandman, right? Maybe yeah. concurrently Sandman's being worked on, but very cool to see these kind of things. I like uh, thinking of that time period. Yeah. But this is Coyote's backstory, and you can see it's drawn in a different style, pretty fun. Um, something I do in my own work, thinking about how style affects how we read these these different worlds, settings, characters, all of that. And you can see this is a much more cartoony thing, obviously a reference to a cartoon world where he's coming from. Even the Coyote looks different in this other world. Um, meets his maker, meets his god. He's tired of the violence in this cartoon world, so he goes and finds a way into heaven to talk to this guy about we got to stop this violence stop this suffering and so he is sacrificed essentially and this godlike character who is you know this is the meta elements we're talking about from the cover and what would go on to be part of this series uh sends him to this other world as like a sacrifice for the cartoon world to avoid this violence the coyote's going to be uh sent you know basically son of god right and that's when we cut to the opening of the comic and being hit on the road by the truck driver. And you see the uh, aftermath of that. So Coyote goes from a cartoon world to, I guess, our world, or at least the comic book world. The world of Animal Man. Yeah, it's interesting. These are those layers of reality that come to define this work and define a lot of Grant Morrison's work. This part makes me really sad. So we get to see Coyote's story but when Animal Man looks at this scroll, he can't understand it. He says, I can't read it. And there's something about that that I found really sad, like, like yeah, it's a, good. a loneliness. Right, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's desperation. Like, like the coyote is like handing it to him because he just doesn't know what to do. And, and we get the full picture. We're giving it, we're giving it all. And then you have that two-panel sequence. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bummer. He's the loneliest person on earth, or the loneliest character on earth in that moment, you know? Yeah. I think part of the reason this hits me so hard, there, I can relate to this. I have uh, a number of people close to me in my life that are terrible communicators. Sure. And, and I recognize, especially whenever things are, are hard for them, they really have trouble, I don't know, being able to share that with somebody. Right. And, and you can see it. You can see it's, it's, it's almost palpable, that, that pain, and just not being able to, to dump that out and to share that burden. And I feel like this sequence really captures that in a lot of ways. 
So our truck driver has recovered from the explosion now, and uh, this is it. This is his opportunity to use the magic bullet, which he had melted down from that silver cross that we see in the beginning. And, uh, and sure enough, he takes his shot and no pain this time. The magic bullet worked. You know, his, his partner, Billy, that gave him that cross saved the world with uh, his sacrifice somehow. This reminds me a little bit of Eric Haven's art. I don't know if it's the blue skies, the line work, something about it. I, no, no real connection there, but it just kind of stood out to me as being that interesting kind of cartooning. And, uh, and we see the coyote finally at rest, and we see the creator hand once right. again. And then, you know, the kind of cross image in the very last panel there. Kind of. Yeah. Kind, kind of the cross image. <laughs> yeah, that's not subtle. <laughs> um, the problems that I have with this story, and I do kind of enjoy it. I think there's some clever stuff. I think there's some insightful writing in it. But there are also holes in it. You know, there's there's stuff that just isn't explained to me. I don't understand the truck's connection with the coyote. I can kind of understand coyote's connection with the truck, uh, if that's whenever the coyote was introduced to this world and that was his first introduction to this type of real pain. But I don't see any connection between the truck driver. Like, why is he stalking this thing? Yeah, that's 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 a messed up piece. And in fact, after reading this, I like read a synopsis online because I'm like, what what am I missing? And there is all this language, like, like uh, the truck driver, um, you know, cites this coyote, thinks that the coyote is the, is the devil and is is stalking it because everything went wrong in his life. Like afterward, none of that's in the comic, really. No, it isn't. It isn't. And I have mixed feelings on Grant Morrison. I, I've read some of his stuff. I'm not a devout Grant Morrison f- follower, but this story to me epitomizes most of the the my relationship with Grant Morrison's writing it's a really cool idea it gets almost there but there's a piece missing that's that's what almost everybody says about about his work and that's that's why I never there's a million comics out there that I want to read and uh when I hear that enough times I don't get much incentive to read something that is slightly above average or whatever you know but I do like this comic, and I, I would recommend it. Um, we looked at another comic that had Coyote character in it, a James O'Barr piece, and I thought about breaking that out as like a companion. Um, I love the Coyote character, so it's kind of cool to see him interpreted by some different creators and in a different space. You know, there are different rules here. Uh, that's one of the elements I like about this comic a lot is the idea that comic book rules operate a little different than a cartoon world. Cool to see that cartoon character put in this version. I wonder who God is, though, Jim. (laughs) Well, I guess read on, right, Ed? (laughs) So that's Animal Man number five. Um, A pretty good entry point, I think, if you're interested in checking out Morrison's Animal Man. Kind of a fun issue to dive into. Yeah, for sure. Like, I'll be honest, um, when I first read it, put it this way, I thought there was more in it than there, there was from what i remember so i wonder if the coyote shows up again like because because, i wondered that because i know there's like sequences where stuff starts getting erased and i wonder if there's like a coyote getting erased image later i forget anyhow it definitely does point to a bigger Mm storyline um for sure yeah and like i said i think this is like the the first time where we start to see fourth wall meta stuff really happening in the series and then it just it just accelerates to to the climax this is where you put your camera your, your face under the camera and look directly at the <laughs> at the youtube viewer jim <laughs> and say i see you <laughs> should we get out of here yeah that's all i have k favors like follow subscribe to the youtube channel hit the bell we'll notify you when the next videos are available octobriana in stores right now selling out quick like hotcakes Patreon.com slash Ed Piscor. I'm serializing my Red Room comics every Tuesday. New strips go live. Dozens and dozens of them are up there right at this moment. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we're doing. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. Let's go work on our own meta comics, Jim. (laughs) Give them the marching orders. Read more comics.